Hey guys, as hard as it is for all of us to believe, in three months time, this will all be over. And I know, I know, it doesn't seem quite right, does it? That in two months time, exams are going to start, and then a month later, this is all going to be over. Um, and I really don't mean to start off a video or I'm down by freaking everyone out, but um, yeah, two months till they start. Pretty much three months for everyone until they finished. It is going to be a hard, hard month. That month between the middle of May and the middle of June. Um, and we need to start preparing for it now. Now, the most important thing to remember over these next few months is that looking after yourself, looking after your mental health, cannot wait until the summer. It can't just be something that you're going to put off and think about later and do later. You can't sleep for the whole of July through to the end of August when we pick up our results and make up for spending all night sitting up revising now. So please, please, please don't do that. Please don't just sit in your room not talking to people studying. That is not healthy, that is not good for you, that is not going to make you a happy, smiley person. So please don't do that. However, there are some things that I really would like you to be doing and uh, the best way for you to revise is by doing practice papers. So, so many practice papers. Like, I know we've been probably been trying a few other things over the past few months, maybe trying flashcards, maybe trying mind maps. Um, really the best thing, the thing we need to spend our fo time focusing on now is doing practice questions. Um, whether that's um, practice papers you've downloaded from the exam board, whether it's practice papers or workbooks that you've downloaded from me, whether it's stuff you've been given at school, whether it's stuff your teachers have made, whether it's stuff you've made for your study group, maybe it's stuff you're sharing around friends. Doing exam questions, doesn't matter what topic it is, doesn't matter what level it is, doesn't matter what style it is, doing exam questions, getting a different colour pen, marking your answer, using the mark scheme, and let's be honest, you've got to be brutal when you're doing this because that's how the examiners will mark your work. And then looking at what sort of things you can do to improve your work. Is it just knowledge that's missing out and you need to highlight that bit in your revision guide or your um, specification and that's the bit you need to revise a bit more, that's the bit you need to focus on. Or did you misread the question? Do you need to focus on looking at your command words in between describe and explain? Or is it the application of maths in strange, unusual circumstances? Is that what we need to start focusing on? So do as many past papers as you can, do as many practice questions as you can, um, and use those to identify your areas of weakness. Use those to identify how you can take what you've written and improve it for later on. Now, as you go about your day-to-day -day life, there's probably a little time spent not doing very much. I know you are all manically busy revising at home, sorting this out, trying to fit this commitment in, but even still there's probably a little bit of time where you're not actually doing much. Whether this is like waiting for the bus or on the bus or on the train, um, whether this is having breakfast or whether this is kind of like, you know, waiting for something to happen or adverts in television, you know, there's probably like five minutes here, there, there's just like dead time, that's nothing time, when nothing actually happens during that time. And what we can start to do just for the next couple of months, I'm not saying you have to do this forever, I'm just saying for the next couple of months, why don't we try and use that time a little bit more productively. Whether it's, you know, over breakfast, instead of watching the news or watching other things on YouTube, just go and watch one of my videos, one of the whole topic videos, and then slowly, 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 that will start to sink in. Or while you're waiting for the bus, do some flashcards on Quizlet, or do some of the multiple choice questions from my website. Slowly, 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 things are going to start to sink in. Because it is every little helps at this stage. We have, you know, 58 days until the first biology paper, the first science paper, that's generally the first one. There's going to be a few languages ones that pop up in crazy places before that, but the first big paper is generally um, in the middle of May and it is 
Barge. Now I know the tendency is to revise for your first papers first and then once you've got one paper out of the race start revising for the next one but these exams are packed really really close. Um, you might have like a morning and an afternoon exam, you might only have a day between exams, you might be lucky and have a whole weekend between exams but you can't leave revising until your June exams until you've got your May exams out of the way. We have to be revising for the last exam as well as revising for that first exam even though it doesn't feel like the right thing to be doing. We can't leave revising for whichever exam you've got, physics, right at the end until we've done all of the other ones. It needs to be a continuous process. Now obviously, it's so obvious, once you've done an exam you don't need to revise for it anymore so you can repurpose that time revising for other things. But if you have a block in your timetable that's say for languages or history or science, once you've got some of those exams out of the way, you can change your focus and start to switch it around to other things. But please, don't just revise so much for the first exam that by the time you've got to the second exam or your third or your 20th exam that you are A, exhausted and B, haven't done any revision for that last exam. You need to pace yourself, you need to spread things out. If you haven't got a timetable already, you don't have to spend time making one. You can just keep a simple tally chart of how many hours or half hours you spent revising for each exam. So make a list of your exams if you want to divide it up by week or divide it up by month and have a little block grid system going on in there. That'll be great. And then just tick off when you've done revision for different exams so that you know you're not just revising for this exam, you know you're not just revising for that exam, that you've spread things out. If you haven't had time to make a timetable yet, we don't really have time to fit one in, we need to be focusing on revision. So there is loads of stuff over on my website to help you with that. So good luck guys. Um, I know that the, there's a horrible title to this video, two months until exam starts, but on the flip side, there's three months until they're over and you've got, you know, the whole of July, most of August, most of June to just relax and try and get over the trauma of doing these exams. So good luck guys, I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way. I am not going to be resting until you are. I'm going to be working, working, working until you put down those pens and I put down that pen for the last exam of the season. I am not stopping because I know you guys are not stopping. I am constantly writing stuff to get stuff off my website as quickly as I possibly can for you. I'm answering as many questions as I can um, from you guys um, because I know how hard it is um, and I'm here with you and together we can do this. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. <laughs>